Okay, so in this video I'm gonna show you how to read the speed from the GPS sensor and display it on the Arduino using the OLED display. This video is sponsored by REX, the manufacturer of the GPS sensor, who was kind enough to send me the GPS sensor together with the external antenna, so thanks for that. So let's get started. Let's take a look at this GPS device, which is this tiny little board with very small chip, which is hidden behind this shielding, and it has few connections. So there's a connection for the external antenna, which is highly recommended because otherwise you would have to have a direct visibility of this chip to the sky. And here is a connection. So the chip uses the serial communication, which is quite handy because you can then connect any kind of microcontroller to read the serial messages. But not only you can use microcontroller, you can also connect this to your PC. And that's probably the easiest and fastest way how to get started and start reading the data and find out if the GPS is working. However, there is one problem right in the beginning. If I flip the board, there are pins for VCC and ground, and the VCC is usually 5 volts or 3.3 volt, but this board is different, and that is that it's, this chip is using 1.8 volt logic. So when you use a board like this to convert serial communication to USB communication, you have to make sure that it supports this logic level. And thankfully I was able to find one, I will put the link down in the description. You can see that there is this little jumper, which you can use to switch between the 5 volt, 3.3 volt or 1.8 volt logic. By the way, those boards are often called USB to TTL. The TTL stands for transistor to transistor logic, but of course this is just a USB to serial communication board. There are just different names for those. So once you have this board, you connect the VCC to VCC, ground to ground, and then TX to RX and RX to TX. There is a reset pin on the GPS board, but that one doesn't have to be connected. Since I'm currently inside, I will connect the external antenna and put the antenna outside my window, otherwise it will not be working, and then finally connect this USB to TTL board to my PC. Note that based on the used chip on that board, you might want to install drivers in case it's not being automatically installed for you. So once you have this connected, there are multiple ways to start the chip. And probably the easiest way is to use a dedicated application called the GNSS Monitor for Customer. The link is in the description. And here you want to connect to the chip, so we'll click Setup, Serial Port, and here you want to fill up the correct port number, which usually is the highest one, so in my case I believe it is 15. All the other settings should be left to default. Let's click the OK button and see what happens. And nothing is happening, and that's because we've opened the connection, but we haven't actually started the chip, we haven't started receiving the GPS data. And we do this by a few different ways. You can see we have a few buttons in here, which has called warm and hot start. So those are three different ways how to start the chip. And the difference is that the hot start will be the fastest and the cold start will be the slowest. But in order to perform a hot start, you would first have to have some data saved in the chip, like the date, there may be the last position and stuff like that. So even if I click the hot start, it will still revert back to cold start in the beginning. So let's just click the called start to start the chip and you will see that immediately we get some kind of messages in this window and that's the way how the chip communicates with the PC and eventually with the microcontroller so it sends those messages those sentences and those are called NMEA messages NMEA messages or NMEA sentences and what this application is doing is getting those messages and extracting the data and getting the you know position and velocity number of satellites and the position of satellites the important thing to note is that we will get those messages as soon as we start the chip but right now you can see that those are just garbage data you know all the zeros and it says no fix so what we actually have to do is wait until we have we are fixed for some satellites and then we will get some real data so that's something to keep in mind as soon as we start the chip we get the data but it doesn't mean that those are real data or correct data so let me wait a while and eventually those labels will turn blue and if you want to speed things up the best way to do that is of course to move the antenna outside of the window just like I did right now you can see that now the labels turn turned blue and we get some real data and obviously I did blur those a little bit just because I don't really want you to know where I live but nevertheless we get some real altitude but uh, right now I'm most interested about the velocity and obviously since I'm not moving I'm just sitting here the velocity is zero so in order to get some velocity I've taken my laptop and uh, put it in my car and just drive around the city and while I was driving I did click the start logging button which pretty much just takes this output from the sensor and saves it into a text file. This is the content of the text file. You can see that each line is a separate NMEA message. It starts with the message type and it always ends with the asterisk and the number, which is a checksum, and in between there are some data. Let me show you one tool which is quite handy. It's called NMEA Generator, and you can use this online tool to just load my generated NMEA file, and it will show you the points on the map. So you can see here I was driving around the city, and if I zoom in, you can see that sometimes maybe I was slowing down because of the traffic lights. And if I click some point, 
you can get the exact data for my heading, my speed and the position. So even without doing anything else, I can already see where I was driving and what was my speed, even when the speed is displayed as meters per second, not kilometers per hour or miles per hour. So I would have to do some calculations. Anyway, if you don't have the GPS sensor, you can also use this tool to generate your own NMEA file. So you'll just click this add point and you'll just start adding points and it will give you those positions and speed. And then you click the generate NMEA file and you can use that file as well. So you don't have to have the GPS center to get the NMEA messages. Let's talk about the different NMEA message types. And here is one page that lists some of them, actually a lot of those. We don't even get all of those messages in our GPS sensor. But what we get is this RMC message, which stands for recommended minimum specific GPS transit data. So if I open this message, you will see it has multiple parts and it is all I need because I only need the validity if the message is valid or not. So if we get a fix or not, and what is the current speed, which is this one speed in nuts over ground. So we will have to do some calculations to get the miles per hour or kilometers per hour, but that's perfectly fine. There are other things in this message, like for example, the position, but we don't care about that right now. Inside the GNSS tool, there is a way how to limit the type of messages that you are receiving from the GPS sensor. If you go to options and select NMEA settings, you can select only some of those. So let me just select only the RMC messages, hit apply, and now you should see only the RMC messages inside our output. And I think that at this point, that's all we need to know about the GPS sensor. So let's move back to our Arduino project. So here is what we have from the last time. So there is this OLED display connected to Arduino Uno, and we have a potentiometer that sets the value which is being drawn on the display. There is a dedicated video, I will put the link down in the description, and I would highly suggest you watch this video because it has all the important details. Anyway, right now we are interested in receiving some serial data. For that, we will first open the connection inside the setup function. So I have to first find the setup function, and in the setup function, we will open the connection by saying serial begin and we specify the speed. Usually I would go with 960, but uh, since the GPS sensor is operating at 1150.200, I will use that speed, so 1150.200. Just to know that everything is working properly, I will also print some message. For example, the serial connection initialized. Now, when you send some serial data to Arduino, there is a dedicated memory that stores the data and you can get access to this memory by looking at the value of serial available. So if there is something in the memory, this value will be bigger than zero, then you can use the serial read to read the data. So this code is pretty much doing what we are trying to do. So it looks into the memory. If there is something in the memory, it will read the data into the incoming byte variable and then print it out back. So I will probably just copy this example code from the Arduino website into our code. So inside the loop, as the first step, we'll just paste the code. And of course, we would need this uh, incoming byte variable. So we'll copy this one as well, like so, and we'll put it into the list of our variables. And I probably don't need to print this message. So I will only print the incoming byte. I don't probably need this one. So let's rerun the simulation and see what we got. Now, if I type in something in here, for example, letter A, I will get 97 and 10. And that's the ASCII code for the letter A and the 10 is for the new line. So let's just change it to not print the ASCII characters, but instead the characters itself. And here's my very crude way of doing so. So I'll just cast it into the character and just print it as print, not a print line, because the character for new line should be changed to new line, hopefully. Let's rerun this and hopefully now we will get actual characters being print out, which seems to be the case. So ABC and it's printing out. And you will notice if I type longer message, it takes some time for those characters to appear. And the reason for this is our code. We are only looking if there is something in the serial buffer and then we read it and then we continue with calculations and our loop for drawing. So what we need to do instead is we want to read all the characters, not only one when we get to this point. So instead of if, I will change this to while loop. So it will make sure that if there is anything in the serial buffer, we are trying to read all the characters before we actually move on to calculations and drawing. So again, if I run the simulation, we should be getting the data much faster. So let me just type in some message and you can see it's immediately there. Let's try to send some real message. So I'll open my driving record and I will select one of the RMC messages, for example, this one and just copy it into clipboard and paste it here. And as soon as I send it, you will notice something strange. I'm not getting the whole message. You can see that this AV27 is missing. And if I count the number of characters, so if I jump back to the notepad and count all the characters until this point, you will notice that it says 64. So we only have 64 characters and it makes perfect sense because the thing with the R you know, serial buffer is it can hold only up to 64 characters, 64 bytes. And what's most likely happening is that we are getting this message somewhere around here where we are in the drawing loop because it takes the most time. And so somewhere around here, we are getting this whole message, but we are filling this Arduino buffer, all the 64 characters and the rest of the characters will simply get lost because we are not reading it, not until this point, until we get here. But those are just assumptions. So let's see if we can get some data to prove our theory. 
for that I will set some pins to low or high during our calculations and later on I will read those values using the logic analyzer. I don't want to use digital pins 0 and 1 because those are also used for the serial communication. So I'll for example use pins 6 and 7. First I need to set the pin mode to be the output. So I'll just copy this sample code from the Arduino website. Inside the setup function I will set the pin 6 to be output and pin 7 to be output. And then what I will do is inside the loop, I will set the pin 6 to be high in the beginning of the loop. So digital write high. So pin 6 should be high in the beginning. And then after we do all the calculations before we draw anything, I will set it to low. So this time, this way we will be able to measure how much time it takes to perform the calculations, measure how much time it takes to draw stuff. However, since I already know that the draw stuff takes the most time, we are using the page mode in the UAG library, which means that we are redrawing every single page of the display and there are eight different pages. This loop is being executed eight different times. So I can also create another digital write for pin seven and I will just toggle between low and high based on the page. So every single page, I will just flip it from low to high and and vice versa. For that let's create a helper variable type boolean which I will simply call pin 7 state and set it to false in the beginning. Then inside our drawing loop which is in here I will just change the state so I will set the state is not equal state which will toggle it from low to high and high to low and then say digital write pin 7 to be the pin 7 state. By the way the low and high true and false those are really just zeros and ones so it should be working hopefully. And of course change the pin from 6 to 7. So it will not make any difference inside the emulator. Let's jump into Arduino IDE and upload it to a real Arduino. Once I have this uploaded to Arduino I want to connect the logic analyzer to pins 6 and 7 and I also want to connect to the serial interface but I cannot use the pins 0 and 1 because those will already have the corrupt message. I want to connect the directly to the USB to serial chip which is this one and thankfully this one is quite big so I can just google the pinout and connect to pin number 2. I have also connected one of the grounds to the Arduino ground to minimize the noise. By the way I'm using the logic analyzer from Celia but probably any type of analyzer will do the work. Let's start the logic to application and say that we need digital pins 0, 1 and 2 and that's probably all we need so we can start capturing it. And as soon as I hit the start button you can see something is going on so let's just stop it and see what we get. So the D1 measures the time for our computations, for our calculations and for our drawing. So this very small piece below 1 millisecond is actually for all the calculations and then this big piece is the drawing loop. And you can see up here we are toggling between the low and high state for every page of the display so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, seven eight pages of the display and that all together takes around 86 milliseconds so together with the calculations it's 87 milliseconds which corresponds to the 11 hertz which is the same as frames per second so we are updating our display around 11 times per second the last line the d2 is pulled high and that's for the serial communication and we are currently not sending anything so let's send the very same message as we were saying previously in the emulator i will start the analyzer and i will open the arduino ide and open the serial monitor and in here once it's up and running i'll paste the message few more times like so and I think that's fine so I'll stop the analyzer zoom out to see if we have any messages inside the D2 line which seems to be the case so I'll zoom in as much as I can and maybe add the analyzer to see if we get the correct data so I'll click this analyzer and add a new async serial the speed is the correct one 115200 a line is D2 which is fine so hit save and if I zoom in you can see that we get the same full message so it's received full message but the problem is it was received during the drawing cycle so you can see this is the calculations and the place where we look for the message this big piece of the time is the drawing function drawing all those eight different pages for the display so since this was received during the drawing cycle the buffer was overflown and actually very full so we only get 64 characters instead of those 71 characters and really to get the full message we would have to be precisely with timing and get the message right around here where we do the calculations and I can zoom out to see if that was the case but I don't think so you know it, it will be very unlikely to get it like here like this I mean this will be the case I think at once we did get the full message so we start receiving the message then was the calculations looking for the message so if I open the serial monitor I should see that at one point we did get the full message which is this case so here actually like this we have the full message received this was this case again it's quite a luck to get the full message with this timing and there are a few different ways how to solve it you can see that this message is very thin it takes very little time for this message to be sent so if we can spread it out a little bit more make it wider in time it means we have a big chance of catching it and making it wider means lowering the speed of the transmission so in the arduino i will temporarily change the speed to now 9600 upload the sketch one more time and while it's uploading i will start the 
analyzer, open the serial monitor, change the speed to be the same, so 9600, and send the message a few more times, like so. And you can see that we have a garbage data in here because we have to change the analyzer. So for this analyzer, edit it and change the speed to 9600. And now you can see that the message is much wider. So many times we will be able to get the full message because for example here the message is being transmitted. Then we jump to our logic state where we actually catch the message. So we get the full message and it was obvious in the serial monitor. You can see that many times we did get the full message, but sometimes we did get not. And that's always, of course, the case where it was in between during the drawing stage. Like if I zoom out, I should see some occurrences of this, for example, here. This was this message was fully transmitted during the drawing stage. So during the drawing, we would have to also look for the content of the serial buffer. And we can say copy this line and inside the drawing. So inside here, we can say that if there is something in the buffer, we'll just exit the loop. So if the serial available is bigger than zero, I'll just exit the loop by calling the break function like so. And that should fix it completely. If I open the serial manager now and paste the message, I should see the full message anytime I press the send button, which is true. And even without looking at analyzer, we know that we are getting the full message. With all that said, I will use a much, much simpler solution this time. And it is if I look into RMC message, the speed is this number and it's way before the 64 character limit. So I will just say I don't care about anything that's beyond 64 characters. I will only read 64 characters and not do any kind of timing or changing the speed for the GPS sensor. And with all that said, let's write some code. I'm going to need an array of characters, the seal style string. Let's call this the message buffer. And let's make it sized 428 characters just to stay on the safe side. Since I'm getting the characters one by one, I would need some kind of indicator which character I should be writing right now. So I will create a new integer variable message character position and just set it to zero for now. I also want to know if the message was already received. And I also want to identify if the message was new. Inside our loop, we will still use this code, so we will still look at the serial buffer, and if there is something in it, we will read the byte using the serial read, and then we have to do some changes. So I will say that if this incoming byte is a dollar sign character, that means we are getting a new message. So I will set the message new to one, message received to zero, so we haven't received the message yet, the full message. I will set the character position to be zero, so we want to override the first character in our buffer, and we want to clear the buffer, and for that I will just Google set the array to zero in Arduino, and here is some forum post that uses the mem set, so I will just copy this piece, seems to be working, but of course change the name of the buffer from the array to message buffer, and that should fill the array with all zeros. So if we are receiving a new message, but the message wasn't fully received yet, we want to, of course, save the incoming byte into our message buffer. And once we do that, we want to increase the character position inside the buffer. If the incoming byte is SK value of 10 or 13, which corresponds to the new line characters, or if we have already received more than 64 characters, which means that the buffer is full, let's say that at this point we have received our message. So we will set the message received to 1 and message new to 0. Finally, once the message is received, let's print it out. And if I rerun the simulation and paste our RMC message, nothing happens. And that's because we have to change this number from 64 to 63 because we are actually counting from zero. So we don't want to go over 63 and restarting the simulation should hopefully help and we should get the message. Now let's talk about how to turn this string into individual parts, into those individual pieces, and that's often called tokenization, so turning this string into individual tokens. So in the beginning we have our message buffer variable, and since we haven't assigned anything, it's full of nulls. Null is the ASCII character of zero, and let's just pretend that those small circles are null characters. As the next point, we will assign some message, for example this one, and for simplicity let's just say I only assign few of the characters, we are not using the full message, and of course the last character will be the null symbol, and there will be more nulls after that, but we don't actually care about it that much. Before we call the function, we need a new variable that will call message token pointer, and then we can finally call the function. The function is called strtok, string tokenization, and it needs two parameters. The first parameter is the string, our message buffer, which is this one, of course, and the second parameter is a list of delimiters. If I look at my string, I can see that the commas are characters that are separating the individual pieces, so I will only say comma. So when I call this function, the function will look into the first occurrence of the comma character, so it will, of course, find it in here, and it will replace it with the null symbol. There is also a second thing that will happen, and that is that this pointer will point to the beginning of the first token, so when we look into the content of message token pointer, we will get this part, 
parts. So we will get the first part of our message and then we can save it as a separate variable or we can just uh, look into the content, do anything with it. The important part is we are changing the original message buffer string. We are not creating any new variables or using a new memory. Now here comes the important part and that is if you want to tokenize the rest of the string, you have to actually call the string talk function with the first parameter being null like this that will tell the function to work on the very same string. So when I call it like this, now it will look into the next occurrence of this character, which is of course here, and it will also replace it with the null. And again, it will move the message token pointer to the next piece of the message, which is this one. So now when we look into the content of message token pointer, we will get the second token of our message or second part of our message. And we can continue like this until the message token pointer will be also null, which means we are at the end of the message. So let's try to do the same with our code we would need few more variables. So the first one will be an indicator if the message was already tokenized. Let's call this message tokenized. Then we need some kind of indicator on which token we are currently on. So let's call this message token counter. And finally, we need that pointer to the token. We want to change the last if statement saying if the message was received, but at the same time, if the message wasn't tokenized yet, we want to, of course, tokenize a message. For that, we will first set the token counter to zero, and I will paste the part of the RMC message to see what we are dealing with, like so. So let's call the str doc function, which will, of course, be assigned to message token pointer. So we'll do message token pointer equals str doc, and the first part is our message, so message buffer, and the second part is list of delimiters. Again, there's just a comma. So now the message token pointer should point to the first part of the message, which will be this part, and it will be the message type. And let's do a quick compare using the string compare function, so str compare function and we will compare the, the message token pointer with the message type which is gprmc. If this returns zero that means that those strings are the same so I will say if string compare of the message token pointer equals gprmc that means we have the rmc message so for now I'll just print some text just to know that it's working. And let's regard the simulation. Looks like I have error in the function name. It should be strcmp compare. Now, when I paste some random message, for example, this vth message, I will only see the message. But when I paste the rmc message, for example, this one, I should see the message saying this is the rmc message. So it's working just fine. Now we can continue with the other parts of the message. So we will say that if the message token pointer is not null, we can continue with the tokenization and we will call the same function. So message token pointer equals string talk. But this time, instead of message buffer, we will say null. And we want to also increase our counter, which is the message token counter. This one is used only for us to know where we are currently at in this message. And we are interested in two different parts of the message. So the part number two is the valid of the message could be either A or V for valid and invalid. And also for the part seven, which is the speed in nuts and that's a floating point number. For the validity, let's create a new variable that will be message rmc wallet. And inside the loop, let's take a look at if, if the message token counter is two. So if the message token counter is two, we can just compare the first characters. So I will say that the, if the first character of the message token pointer, that's index zero, equals letter A, which is this one, it's okay. That's a valid message. In that case, that message rmc wallet will be one. Otherwise, the message rmc wallet will be zero. For the speed, we also need few more variables. So I will create a new variable that I will call it message rmc speed nuts. And that one actually has to be float. And then two integers, one for the speed in miles per hour and second for the speed in kilometers per hour. Inside our loop, let's take a look at the counter is seven. That will be speed in nuts, but we have to first convert this string into a float. Message RMC speed in nuts equals A to F, which is converting string to float. And we will, of course, use the message token pointer. Then for the calculations, I've Googled that you have to multiply those by some values. So for kilometer per hour, we'll multiply this by 1.852. And for the miles per hour, we will multiply the speed in nuts by 1.15078. And I just noticed that there is this if statement, but that will obviously tokenize only the second part of the string. And we want to tokenize all the parts, so we have to change this into while loop instead. And then what I can also do is I can print out the speed just to make sure that it's working. So I will just put a few more serial prints and print both the message RMC speed in nuts, as well as the speed in kilometers per hour and the miles per hour. So let's rerun the simulation and see what we got. So if I paste the RMC message, I should see the speed in nuts as well as in kilometers per hour and miles per hour. So it seems to be working.
At this point, the only thing left to do to our sketch is to make sure that we show the value on the display, and it will be super simple, so instead of setting the speed to be the value of the potentiometer, we just set it to either the kilometers per hour or miles per hour. So in my case, I will set it to kilometers per hour, so speed, kilometers per hour. Let me rerun the simulation and paste one of my RMC messages in there. Press the enter key, and you can see that now the display shows the value of 67, and it says miles per hour, but it's of course kilometers per hour. Now let's go back to the GPS sensor and find out how we can get those RMC messages without using this specialized application. If you think about it, this application is really just a fancy serial monitor that reads those data, those messages, and turns those into values, but we have to find out what comments this application is sending to the GPS sensor in order to get the data. Thankfully, there is the documentation, so if I open up this PDF file, there is a screenshot for the application uh, with some basic settings to how to connect to the chip, and in the next page, we can see some basic comments. So if you want to perform a call start, we just send at GCD comment. So let me open some serial terminal for example a real term and the first thing to do is to click half duplex so we can see what we are typing in the port setting i'll select the right port in my case it's port number 15 and the speed should be 115200 i will click and unclick this open and now it should be connected to the gps sensor so let's try to type in at gcd GCD. If I press the enter key, nothing happens. And that's because in order to send a command, we have to send the command together with the slash r slash n, which means carriage return and the new line. And the CR stands for carriage return. So we've already posted the carriage return symbol, but we haven't sent a new line. And to do that, we have to press the control enter key and it will send a new line. And you can see that now we are getting the messages right now as we are getting those messages in the application. Probably the easiest way how to send the same command. Let me just uh, start one more time is to jump to the send tab and here I can type in the same thing so gcd but this time we can also type in slash r slash n and press the send s key button that will do the very same thing or we can just select the end of line characters which will be carriage return and line feed like so and then we can type it without those two that's the very same thing to do so we can see it also says done we are only interested in the rmc messages so let's just tell the gps sensor to only send those so i'll jump into the output sentence select and here is the syntax which says we should send the pssl with the argument and the argument will set which of those messages should be sent so if i open the calculator and switch to the programmer's view we are only interested in the bit 7 which is rmc message so it's 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. so it's one and then one two three four five zero so one, two, three, four, five zeros, which is the hexadecimal value of 20. So inside the real term, I can say at BSSL 0x and the hexadecimal of 20. Like so, if I select send S key, I have to also click the CR and new line. This is kind of confusing because those two checkboxes are for the second line and those two checkboxes are for the first line. So if I select send S key, I should now limit the sentences only to the RMC messages, which is true. Now I still have the recording of my drive around the city. Uh, let's see if I can use the real time application to send this data to Arduino. I will open the different port, which is port number seven and select the send tab and select the file to send. I will increase the delay between lines to 1000 milliseconds, which is one second. That's the same timing that the GPS sensor uses. And finally click the send file button. So now we are sending the pre-recorded RMC messages from the GPS sensor into the Arduino and you can see that the speed is shown on the display. Now because of the different voltage levels between the GPS sensor and the Arduino, it's not possible to connect those directly without some in-between level shifter, but I will show you a different thing and that is how you can actually get the message from the GPS sensor and using the computer forward those to the Arduino. This is called port forwarding and there are actually dedicated applications to do that, but you can do this easily with just using the command line. As a first thing, we have to write down the port numbers, which in my case is 15 for the GPS sensor and 7 for the Arduino. The next step is to close the real term because a certain port could be only accessed by a single application. Then we will run PowerShell by typing PowerShell in the run command. And here is the script that we will be using. So first we define the port for the GPS sensor, which in my case is port number 15 with the defined speed and parameters. Then we define the port for the Arduino with the com port number 7 in my case, but with the very same speed and parameters. Open both ports and while the port is open, we will read the line from the GPS, echo it in the PowerShell and write it the same line to the Arduino. So while I have both the GPS sensor and the Arduino connected to my PC, let's just copy the script into PowerShell and see what we get. And it shouldn't be a big surprise that we are getting zeros for speed because I'm really not moving at this time. What was a surprise to me was seeing that I get the valid RMC messages even when I'm inside, so eventually you can get signal. It just takes more time to initialize. The next time I will connect the GPS sensor directly to Arduino, but for now that's it. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you have any comments, please put those down in the comment section. And I hope to see you next time. Thank you again for watching and I hope to see you soon. Thanks and bye.